Hello and welcome to part 4 of the ongoing saga of the Vibrations and Damping lecture series. If you made it this far, I salute you. I think we've developed a cure for insomniacs with this lecture series. Anyway, here we are with the fourth presentation, where we're going to consider further questions related to damp mass spring systems. It is assumed you've managed to wade your way through the previous three presentations, and indeed it's encouraged that you have browsed those presentations for the underpinning knowledge required for part four here. As outlined in an earlier presentation, we're limiting our analysis to that a system having a main mass, capital M, within which there is a much smaller mass, labelled lowercase m, rotating at some angular velocity, whilst located at some eccentricity or radius from the point of rotation. And it's due to the centrifugal effects of this offset mass, lowercase m, that induces the disturbing force causing the vibration effects. For reference, we considered the concept of centrifugal force in a previous presentation. In this part 4 presentation, we're going to consider the analysis where we have to calculate the eccentricity or radius r of the rotating mass lowercase m given various parameters, as well as consider further questions similar to that in part 3 of the lecture series, but are slightly complicated within the way the information is presented in the question. Here's an overview of the vibrations in damping presentation, part four. The presentation commences with a brief recap of the nomenclature and formula used throughout the lecture series. Example 1b is a full solution in which we have to calculate the out of balance radius r for our rotating mass. Question 1b is very similar to example 1b, essentially different numerical values where again we have to calculate the eccentricity, or the radius r. Question 2b, we have to calculate the amplitude a and the phase angle phi for a particular problem, and we conclude with some questions for the students to attempt at their own pace. These questions are slightly more complicated in the way they are presented, but the overall solutions are very similar to that of our part 3 previous presentation. Overview continued, and here are the approximate start times for each of the various sections contained within this presentation to hopefully aid your access through the presentation. And just note I've added one slide at the end of the presentation to provide a brief conclusion of the vibration analysis we've undertaken within this series of presentations. Here's our recap of the summary of the nomenclature and the formulae derived. I won't bore you again by outlining what's on the next few slides. If you've seen the previous presentations, you're fully aware of the terminology, nomenclature and formulae we're using. But here's the first slide of the summary showing various formulae derived in the previous presentations. Here's the second summary slide outlining some damping terminology and again some equations derived previously. And here's the third summary slide, formulate to calculate amplitude, phase angle, and the forces involved in this analysis. If you need further information on notation and formulae, you can always refer to the previous presentations. Example 1b. A workshop machine of mass 23 kilograms is mounted on a flexible support that deflects 60 millimeters due to the machine's self weight. The actual, sometimes termed viscous damping, is equivalent to one third of the critical damping provided. The machine contains a mass of 900 grams rotating at 3000 RPM for which the centre of gravity of the mass is offset from the axis of rotation, and this offset is unknown. We're asked to calculate the offset if the machine vibrates with an amplitude of one centimetre. If you think you can solve this problem without further assistance, I would encourage you to stop the presentation and do so. 
but I will outline the full work solution on the following slides. So example 1b, here's the commencement of the solution. As always, extract the information from the question. The machine has a mass of 23 kilograms, so capital M is 23 kilograms. The flexible support deflects 60 millimeters under the machine self weight. So deflection of support delta is 0 0.016 meters. The offset mass is 900 grams. So lowercase m here is 0 0.9 kilograms. Rotational speed of the offset mass is 3000 RPM. So capital omega here, 3000 RPM. And the machine vibrates with an amplitude of one centimeter. So capital A for the amplitude is 0 0.01 meters. In this problem, we've actually got to find the unknown offset, symbol R here. So the radius is to be determined. Initial calculations here. The first thing is the machine's weight force, W. We know that's the mass multiplied by gravitational acceleration. So in this case, it's 23 kilograms multiplied by 9.81 meters per second squared. So the weight force is 225.6 newtons. The stiffness of the system, in our case K here, that's the weight force divided by deflection delta. So inserting the values, the stiffness is 14,100 newtons per meter. Note that the damping ratio, zeta, is actually given in the question because we're informed that the actual damping is equivalent to a third of the critical damping provided. Now, zeta is actually the actual damping divided by the critical damping value. So, the question explicitly now gives us the zeta value. It's a third. So, that is stated in the question. Example 1b continued. Probably for reference, I've actually calculated the critical damping value and the damping constant, but we don't actually need those specific values in this particular solution. I've next calculated the angular velocity of the rotating mass m, symbol omega here. So that's the value in RPM multiplied by 2 pi upon 60. So in this case, that's 3000 multiplied by 2 pi upon 60. So omega evaluates to 100 pi radians per second which is approximately 314.2 radians per second in decimal. I've calculated the undamped angular frequency, omega n here. That's the square root of the stiffness calculated on the previous slide, divided by the system mass. So inserting the values, that's 24.76 radians per second. And the maximum disturbing force, symbol F0, is calculated from the formula m omega squared r. Notice this is lowercase m used in the equation, so that's 0 0.9 kilograms multiplied by the omega squared 100 pi squared. So F0 evaluates to 88,826.44 r. That would of course have the unit of the newton for force. Example 1b, solution continued. So now using the equation for a squared we derived previously. This is equation 11b shown on the summary slide here. I basically now insert the values from our previous slide and evaluate the solution. I'll let you review the solution at your own pace here. I've tried to label the steps of the calculation for your ease of understanding. What you should find is that the offset radius r is approximately equal to 254 millimeters. So this value here. I'd encourage you to stop the presentation and just review example one to make sure you're clear of the solution process. Here's question 1b. A one ton machine is mounted on flexible supports which deflect 10 millimeters due to the weight of the machine. The actual damping of the machine is 12.528 megagrams per second. The machine contains a rotor of mass 100 kilograms for which the center of gravity is slightly offset from the axis of rotation. 
we're asked to determine this eccentricity, that's the radius, of the centre of gravity if the machine vibrates with an amplitude of 3 millimetres when the rotor operates at 500 RPM. So again, this is a very similar problem to the previous example 1B, where we have to find the value of R, and we'll be using the equation F0 is equal to M omega squared R. The answer is stated in the bracket. I would encourage you to stop the presentation and attempt question 1B, but I will very briefly outline the solution on the following slides. So question 1B, here's the commencement of the solution. I'll let you review this solution at your own pace. It's very similar to example 1B. As always, just extract the information carefully from the question. Question 1B solution continued. In this particular question, we will need to calculate the damping ratio zeta from the information given in the question, shown here. But again, I'll let you follow the rest of the solution on this slide. And question 1B, final part of the solution. Again, I'll let you review this at your own pace. The offset radius is approximately equal to 21 millimetres. Question 2B. A machine has a mass of 45 kilograms. It is supported on flexible supports. The dash pot provides resistance to the motion equivalent to 35.1% of the critical damping that deflect 8 centimetres under the machine's self-weight. The applied disturbing force to the machine is generated via a reciprocating component of the machine that moves with simple harmonic motion, which has a combined mass of 3.2 kilograms and an offset radius of 95 millimetres which is assumed to be proportional to the velocity. We've got to calculate the machine's amplitude A of the force vibration and its phase angle phi between the force and the displacement when the machine's driving shaft speed is 3 revs per second. Answers are shown in the bracket. I'd encourage you to start the presentation and attempt question 2b. This time we need to calculate the amplitude and the phase angle. So we'll be using equation 11 and equation 12 from our summary sheet here. But I will show you the full work solution on the following slides. Question 2b is the beginning of the solution. I'll let you review the solution at your own pace here. Just extracting information from the question. To be careful in this question, the speed of the offset mass is actually 3 revs per second. So use the appropriate conversion in this case. Question 2b, solution continued. Again, I'll let you review the solution at your own pace. We have to calculate the damping ratio zeta in this instance. Also, we can calculate the disturbing force, F0, because we have all the information this time. And question 2b, final part of the solution. Again, using our A squared formula from our previous derivation, we can calculate the amplitude, approximately 8.72 millimetres. And we can calculate the phase angle phi, approximately 148 degrees. Angle phi shown here at this orientation on our ASTC diagram. I'll leave you with some questions to attempt on your own. Question 3b. We've again got to determine the amplitude and the phase angle. Answer shown in the bracket here. And question 4b, again got to calculate the amplitude of the force vibration and the phase difference or phase angle. Answer shown here.
So at last we've made it to the end of part four of the presentation. Here's our final slide, which is essentially a summary of the various considerations and characteristics we've reviewed in this lecture series. As I said at the very beginning, this is not my area of expertise, so I've just tried to provide us as technician engineers with an overview of vibrations associated with damp mass spring systems, where we have harmonic disturbing forces applied to our system, and we consider specifically the case where the out of balance disturbing force was generated by an offset mass rotating within our system. And thus we consider the centrifugal effects associated with this disturbing force. It is hoped you at least you are now familiar with the various terminology, notation, and formulae associated with vibration analysis, and so are aware of such parameters now as spring stiffness K. Characteristics of damping, such as the damping constant C, the critical damping constant CC, and of course the damping ratio, symbol zeta. It's a very important parameter of our vibration analysis. It also considers the various forces applied to our system, our spring force, our damping force, and our inertia force. And knowing the undamped circular frequency of our mass spring system, we're able to determine the amplitude of the vibration caused by a disturbing force and also calculate the phase angle or the angle of lag between the applied disturbing force frequency and the displacement of our system. So I do hope this lecture series has been of some help to you in your understanding of vibration analysis in our limited context of study. Here's the bibliography used to help generate the various parts of this lecture series the very good reference sources here. I wish you well in your vibration analysis and thank you for viewing. For reference we considered the concept of centrifugal force in a previous presentation.